activity throughout the recent century has catalyzed ozone depletion in the atmosphere. The invention of freons for refrigerants in the 1920s helped eliminate the danger of refrigerator leaks. As a result, freon became a vital component in refrigerators. Several forms of the chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, are composed within this renowned freon chemical. As Freon gained popularity in developed countries during the 1960s and was placed in cars and air conditioners along the, with refrigerators, more and more CFC was released into the atmosphere. Government officials and citizens alike were not concerned with the chemical since it is inflammable and non-toxic to human beings. Along with s predictions by scientists that chlorofluorocarbon refrigerant gases would reach the high stratosphere and damaged the ozone in the 1970s, Professor James Lovelock also reported finding traces of significant amount of refrigerant gases in the atmosphere. Along with the growing concern about the subtle effects of Freon came the further investigation into Freon's effect in the atmosphere. In 1985, the ozone hole over the Antarctic was discovered and in 1990, the prediction about Freon's escape into the stratosphere was proven correct. As a result, emissions of the compounds were banned under the Montreal Protocol in 1989, in which numerous countries met and signed an agreement. It has since been implemented and been carried out successfully. Human activities have not slowed down since the turn of the century, and with the new technology, we are able to spot the increasing effects of the CFCs in the atmosphere. Since 2000, concentrations in the atmosphere have been declining due to the agreement from the Montreal Protocol. But the concentration remains about 25% higher than when the first ozone hole was discovered in Antarctica. With new extreme temperatures throughout the world recently, the first significant ozone hole was discovered in the Arctic in 2001, signifying the overall increased ozone loss on Earth in the atmosphere. Though the northern ozone hole is not nearly as significant as that in the Arctic, it reached southward towards Russia and at its farthest extent reached Mongolia. Specific environmental conditions along with weather are necessary for an ozone to form. Cold temperatures in the stratosphere and the sunlight are the driving forces behind the chemical process that eats away at the ozone layer in the atmosphere, which protects us here on the Earth's surface from harmful UV radiation. While the ground temperatures in the Arctic have experienced warmer than average temperatures all winter long, the stratosphere has experienced colder than usual temperatures, spawning the development of an ozone hole. This development is tied to climate change. As greenhouse gases trap more and more heat near the surface of the Earth, the upper layers of the atmosphere cool. The atmosphere is a singu singular body and changes near the surface will affect the upper level conditions in the same way that changes at the poles will affect the lower latitude conditions. The result of an ozone hole will lead to drastic increased de risk of developing skin cancer as well as the harmful effects of the unfiltered UV rays that are bound to hit straight for humans. Due to the size and enormity of the Antarctic ozone, citizens in South Chile have taken precautions against such a threat, fearing that if the ozone hole is to stretch as far as their home, then they will be in major trouble. Polar vortexes lie within the center of the ozone holes in the atmospheres. A polar vortex is a large and continuous cyclone that is located at the Earth's northern and southern polar regions and occurs in the middle and upper troposphere and stratosphere. Polar vortexes occur during the winter nights over the ozone hole where no sunlight reaches the southern pole or northern pole. A powerful circumpolar wind forms in the atmosphere and creates the effects of isolating air over the polar region, which causes bitterly freezing temperatures to persist within the vortex. The air masses above the poles become isolated from the rest of the atmosphere. 
The strong winds formed are what are known as the polar vortex. The combination of the isolated air effect along with the freezing temperatures in the Antarctic and Arctic regions develop clouds known as polar stratospheric clouds or PSCs. PSC's composition includes nitric acid, which is a vital component for an ozone loss. Scientists do not fully understand the mechanism of the PSC freezing. However, they do realize that the formation of the clouds will result in massive damage in the ozone due to its chlorine structures. However, the polar vortex is not an isolated phenomena solely on Earth. There have been sightings of similar powerful forces in planets such as Venus. In retrospect, human activity combined with the active polar vortexes and the formation of polar stratospheric clouds in the ozone holes lead to subtle but detrimental effects for the Earth's ozone. Such phenomena can be greatly reduced through the...